The scene is frightening. The sky blood red. The heat and smoke so intense, it's challenging to see. We're out of here. Out. Uh, no, it's blocked out. This is a neighborhood in San Marcos, California, north of San Diego. And it's the most tense time during a wildfire. The frantic efforts to stop the flames from burning down houses. Incredibly, just a short time before this video was shot, there was relatively little fire in this area. When we got to San Marcos, this is what we saw. Some flames, but winds starting to pick up. The flames and the wind spread the ashes and embers, and that's what makes the fire spread. This area right here, 10 minutes ago, nothing at all. Now we're seeing the smoke and the flames start to form. It's very likely that within the next couple of hours, these trees, this vegetation will be gone. Right down the hill from where I'm standing here in San Marcos, California, which is northeast of San Diego, this is the Cal State San Marcos campus. It's been around for a quarter century. It has now been evacuated. They are hoping that the fire does not spread down there. And in this area, within a five minute walk, there are hundreds of homes, businesses, condominiums, and lots of people. Choppers swoop in, dropping water in the 99 degree dry heat. 30 degrees higher than normal May highs in San Diego County. But then trouble. The winds continue to increase. The fire is getting bigger. It's moving closer to us and moving closer to the houses in the neighborhood. The firefighters we're talking to are getting quite concerned. It's scariest at the moment with the fire now like 100 yards from the homes and I worry about the embers jumping uh, into the grass uh, next to the homes. It's frightening. It is very. And then we see a bizarre spectacle of nature, a fire tornado, a whirlwind of smoke caused by the turbulence of the wind and the intense heat. Seconds after we see it, the fire starts blazing in new spots. We gotta get some lines around the structure. Yeah. Grave concern now as the flames are very close to the houses. And we've witnessed the fire gallop hundreds of yards in just a matter of seconds. More helicopters are called in, dropping water in the smoky haze. Fire personnel on the ground make sure they have an escape route if the blaze jumps again. The fire is still burning here, but it's nothing like it was before. This lush area has been destroyed, but the firefighters appear to have done a good job saving the neighborhood right next to where we're standing. An evacuation order remains in effect here, though. The situation is still way too volatile. The people who live here well aware that their neighborhood could end up looking like this one on the other side of town. Well, fire crews in California say they've concerned that wind and drought conditions will keep fueling wildfires already burning in the state. Crews launched an aggressive attack on the so-called county fire yesterday. It's currently the largest wildfire in California and one of at least 60 fires burning in the country. Most of them are in the West. Firefighters from across California have come to battle this fire now in its sixth day. It's about 27 percent contained, but there are fears that High winds and shifting winds and triple digit temperatures this weekend could make things worse. On fire watch this morning, Interstate 5 is back open right now at the Oregon California border where fast moving wildfires have been burning. The Klamathan fire, as it's being called, erupted near the tiny community of Hornbrook. The entire town has been evacuated, and earlier this morning, the 8,000 acre fire closed I 5 in both directions from Eureka to Ashland. Governor Brown has declared a state of emergency in Siskiyou County. Right now, the flames are only 5% contained. Authorities say they're gaining ground on the so-called county fire, burning west of Sacramento, although some 1,500 homes are still under threat. Thousands of firefighters have been called in to battle the blaze, which has now burned some 86,000 acres of grass and brush. It's a little nerve-wracking because grass fires move so fast. Strong wind gusts, steep terrain, and dry vegetation are making the fight even more challenging. And it's a similar story further east, where wildfires are also burning in Colorado. The spring fire has consumed almost 100,000 acres and destroyed more than 100 homes. That fire is just 5% contained. So far this year, wildfires have destroyed some 2.5 million acres of land across the United States, more than the average of 2.3 million for the same time period over the past 10 years.
This summer, Colorado has seen four of the ten biggest wildfires in the state's history. The spring fire has burned more than 94,000 acres. The 416 fire has burned more than 52,000 acres. And the 117 fire burned more than 42,000 acres. And the Badger Hole fire burned more than 33,000 acres. The spring and 416 fire will not officially be added to the list until they are declared contained. Now out of those wildfires that are raging out west, the number is growing. At least 66 active fires are burning this morning, eight in Colorado alone. You see those massive flames there, and ABC's Clayton Sandell is on the ground. And Clayton, thousands of firefighters are battling these flames this morning. That's right, Michael, and this morning officials are warning that some hot, dry weather could mean some very tough days ahead for firefighters. In Northern California overnight, a 5,000 acre blaze burning structures and shutting down Interstate 5. In Utah, the Dollar Ridge fire destroying 90 homes so far, a thousand more threatened. In Colorado, north of Aspen, a 5,200 acre blaze that began at a shooting range engulfed three homes, including one belonging to a volunteer firefighter. His flames are like 300 feet tall. Um, and I know that he and his colleagues, work, colleagues worked really hard to save his house. From what I understand, there were three fire trucks there working on his house, and the wind just came up so fast. Now, just look at this video. This is what firefighters were dealing with. This is an intense ember shower that was on full display last night. Now, fire officials say that erratic outflow winds, extremely dry fuels, and low humidity caused this fire to more than double overnight. Now, this is up near Aspen, and here's some video from just a few hours ago. The Lake Christine fire has now scorched nearly 5,000 acres and is still 0% contained. Again, so far, three homes have been lost and hundreds of people evacuated. Andy and Bill McCauley were hoping the home where they built 32 years of memories would be spared. At 12.30, you could still see the lights on in the house. Mm -hmm. And when I came back at 5.30 this morning, no it, lights. it was on the ground. It's, it's gone. It's just a chimney. <laughs> to the south, firefighters are making progress on Colorado's third largest wildfire ever, the Spring Creek Fire, charring 161 square miles, seven times the size of Manhattan, and twisting through the smoke of another Colorado fire, this rare mountain tornado. Now, I did talk to the local sheriff overnight. He tells me that roadblocks like this will stay up until it's safe to let people back in, but right now there is no word on when that will be. As this fire grows, so too does the perimeter around it. The Colorado National Guard has sealed off Highway 160, the main east-west road in this portion of the state. But the real effect of this fire can best be seen from the air. Tens of thousands of acres have now been consumed. What is believed to have started so innocently with a pit barbecue has now wiped out more than 100 homes. William and Connie Bartley were evacuated in their wheelchairs, wondering if their house will still be there when they return. At this point, we don't really know uh, whether it's gotten to us or not. They are now living in a Red Cross shelter. A Danish visitor is being charged with accidentally starting the fire as those impacted by it contemplate their futures. I'm ready to leave Colorado. I've been here since 1975, and I'm ready to walk out right now and go back east where there's water. All right, thank you. With containment figures low, there's no end in sight. And a brand new fire just started over the 4th of July holiday, this one in Eagle County. Now, the Lake Christine fire has been burning there since Tuesday night. It's burning north of Aspen, south of Glenwood, in the area of Basalt and El Jebel. You don't have to live near these fires to be impacted by these fires. Denver 7's Jen Kovaleski is live to explain how the fires could contaminate your drinking water. Jen? Yeah, Shannon and Ann, here in Denver, more than 50% of the drinking water comes from the snow runoff in the mountains. Now, as this water makes its way down, the forest serves as a natural filtration system. And here's the headline. Wildfires put those systems at risk and can contaminate your drinking water. Not only are the flames putting homes and lives at risk, but watersheds. And clean drinking water flowing from millions of faucets along the Front Range. The water that's coming out of their faucet 
comes from the forests. Denver watershed scientist Christina Burry says when those forests are turned to ash, the charred mess left behind can ultimately end up in our water supply. All of the sediment and the ash um, would drain to the streams and then the reservoirs and then um, to our treatment plants. Yeah, wildfire will have uh, tremendous effects on the on the vegetation. CU researcher Fernando Rosario Ortiz is warning in a new report about how wildfires are already contaminating streams with unhealthy sediments. The addition of additional sediments indicates that you need to add more chemicals. We have about 200 homes that have been evacuated. Uh, this fire really has a lot to do with how the weather and what the weather conditions are going to be this afternoon. It's, it is about 30,000 acres. 92% of all the fires we have in Utah have been man-caused to this date, 92%. And that means they're all preventable. So we call upon everybody to be wise in what you do out there in the outdoors. With your ATVs, don't park a hot engine over a patch of weeds. Uh, only do a campfire in a designated campground. Uh, don't leave fires unattended. Be careful with fireworks. I mean, a lot of this is just common sense. And this is my home in town. They get everything contained and put out. Now I'll go up to my property and probably end up buying another tent and having to rebuild again. Buy more tools and start all over. Blood, sweat, and tears, and years and years and years, and, and it's a beautiful place, and we just love it. And that this would be a disaster if we lose it. Extremely long day trying to get a handle on this Dollar Ridge fire. By mid morning, they released some pretty sobering statistics. And keeping in mind that this fire only began Sunday afternoon and within about 36 hours, it had already torched about 30,000 acres of land, both public and private, near Strawberry Reservoir, right on the Duchesne and Wasatch County lines. Now, on Monday, several hundred people who were in the path of that fire. They were told to evacuate immediately. The Dollar Ridge fire continues its blaze and path of destruction. The fire, which was reported back on Sunday, has already charred 42,000 acres, and it's just 4% contained. We came up from Lakeside. Uh, we heard there was a lot of horses stranded up here. So we came up from Lakeside and we called Bud up here and tried to do what we can to save these horses' lives. Out here. Let anybody through? Anybody? At first, nobody could come through. How'd you get in? We had to get an escort from the sheriff. Okay, so how many horses did you rescue here? Seventeen, yeah, they said. Seventeen here. Yeah. And you knew the horses were here, or you just took a chance? We knew. We knew they, they were, we knew were here. right where they were. Yep. And we had to get here first. Yeah. Okay, we had to so wait in the Albertsons parking lot. So besides a love for horses, why? Why put your lives at risk? You know, you couldn't come up here and stomach seeing a horse burnt up and just the thought, you know, it's better safe than sorry. And then besides sitting at home on our blazy butts, Watch might as well get up here and help. Uh, there's there's probably hundreds of volunteers up here, but just on this 17 horse uh, project, there's probably almost 30 of us, I'd say. What do you think about all these volunteers coming to help you rescue your horses? I think it's amazing. They're actually all, um, many people own these horses and they're here helping evacuate too. These people are wonderful. We're at the corner of Pine View and Olive View uh, in Alpine. In Alpine, and, and this is your home behind this? This behind is my you? home behind us, what's left of it, yeah. And what happened? Uh, the fire burned it down. I lost uh, a ferret, a cat, and three guinea pigs. And you also mentioned an art collection. Yeah, there was a, a, a good art collection in here too by Jack Rogers Hopkins and it, uh, it went up in smoke too. Thank you.